Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Black Sales season one? Am I still on season one? I'm sorry, it feels like I've been spacing out this show so much because of how busy I've been that I feel like I'm not giving it the justice that it deserves. So hopefully this episode really reels me in. This is episode five, and I know there's only eight episodes per season, so there's only three episodes after this one. I wanna see, for this episode, I wanna see the whole Urca de Lima shit finally start to happen in the last episode. Last episode was kind of like seeds being dropped, and like I feel like they're gonna play out maybe season two, or maybe even season one. I don't know how fast they're gonna like develop these things. For one thing, Vane, has some weird man, some weird spiritual journey that he's about to go on because of this man. I have no idea who this man is. What else is going on? Billy is kind of suspicious of Flint after hearing from, what was the guy's name who died under the boat? Morley, I think his name was. Basically what happened was Flint has this history. I don't know if the story is true or not. It seems like they're really building up this story to be like Flint is the bad guy, but Billy heard this story from Morley. Billy seemed genuinely freaked out by the story. Like he was questioning Flint's intentions and whatever he's trying to do, but I don't think at the end of the day that Billy is going to do anything in regards to acting up against Flint. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think my list as of last episode in terms of favorite characters, it was Jack, Jack, Vane, Flint, Eleanor, Billy? Or did I say Max? I don't remember who I said, but Billy has been kind of growing on me the more I think about it. And when I was editing last week's episode, I kind of like Billy a little bit more now that I'm, now that I went back and kind of, I rewatched the episodes when I edit, so, Every episode I watch at least twice. So going back and looking at the episode and I just, I think that Billy is going to be built up to be this great character. In terms of John Silver now, he's sketching me out a little bit. I really don't know whether or not, I don't know how I feel about him. Also my camera, I just realized, is tilted. Everybody on the show is kind of selfish and looks out for themselves and wants to get their goals to come to fruition and doesn't really care about what it takes to get there. So it should make for a very interesting, interesting run. I guess those are all of my thoughts. Urca de Lima, please, can we get, I wanna see some shit go down this episode. I wanna see like a fucking shit battle, something. I need something. Also, super sorry about the glasses glare that might be happening right now. Um, actually, I'm not sorry. I have shitty eyesight. I'm not gonna apologize for that. <laughs> v. Men are going to die today attacking that merchant ship out there and they'll die not knowing it was all based on a lie. A lie? We don't even know if a the schedule is accurate. We're completely relying on the cook. How can you just pretend- We're only 30 seconds in and he's already calling him out. Never was there a Caesar that couldn't sing the tune. Who's Mrs. Barlow? You've heard the stories, haven't you? She's a witch who pledged my soul to the devil and anoints me with the blood of infants to keep me safe in battle. Come on, I'm not stupid. No, you're not. Flint is such, like, I kind of just want to open up his brain and see what he's thinking. Oh, that wink. I don't know how to wink. So I don't try to run. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Have I done something to you? Flint and his crew offer you a life of freedom and prosperity, for which you repay them by stealing the product of months of their labor and sacrifice. But you're not finished. Then you lure Max into your selfish scheme. Hold on. I specifically tried to talk her out of getting wrapped up in my selfish scheme. <laughs> Oh shit. That is a huge ship. I have no concept of how many people are on it. I don't remember how big his crew was, but that is a good sized ship. As for our future here, I'm working on a deal that'll make a safe place for us among the farmers in the interior. The Barlow country was supposed to watch over you. That's Flint's problem. But Scott, the 
fuck did you have to threaten him with to get him to betray me? We talked like men and he saw reason. I hate this dude. Yeah, fuck you. I don't like him, him and his stupid ass wig. He looks like a fool. He looks like a damn fool. She's got no business. That means she's out. And I'm going over there to make sure she knows it. Captain? He's in his own world right now. I'll be upstairs. This is a lovely stop, Cap. But if we are to ever hunt as a proper crew again, we will need. Well, the crew. Yeah. There's men on the We have. Why don't we take advantage of Mr. Hammond's momentary distraction and have Mrs. Maples and tender the whore on the beach? <laughs> I like them. I like them as a duo. Don't tell me this is gonna be Matt. Come on, yo. All right. Get out. Yo, women are so strong and so powerful. Like to be able to endure some shit like that. Fuck. She wasn't using enough lotion. And that can't be how much off of you you could have left. You didn't. What do you care? Once one of them came and put his balls on my shoulder whilst I was asleep. I thought it was funny. Last time he put them anywhere. I kind of like her. She's climbing the ranks a little bit. If you take it, they'll give it. You were the one who threw me to them in the first place. I only thought they'd kill you. Damn. She's a very interesting character. I'm very intrigued by Miss Anne that? Bonnie. Both want to welcome in here. I suppose we can go spend more time with our friend on the beach. Oh. Ooh, Wonderful as she is. Girl. So, uh, Oh, I'm getting mad for her. I'm clenching my fists. We'll send her your love. <laughs> The captain believes Bryson will attack the port. So, if we can't ship to her and we can't get close to her, how the hell do we board her? Yeah. Uh, of course, we need to board alongside her. We just need Captain Bryson to cooperate and bring the Andromache about for us to do so. Every man on this crew had a first time. You're overdue. Right, I've never even shot a pistol. Half the time, they don't even fire. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, he is not the most comforting person. I just want to see a ship battle, man. When they were talking about like ship strategy and stuff, that was just the coolest thing to me. I guess it's because I'm not really that educated on it. Like I'm so used to just regular war strategies, but I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about right now. <laughs> <laughs> like what? I just think ships are fucking cool. Ship battles are cool and I want to see one. This music is very like Hans Zimmer. It's supposed to make you anxious. You will make it through this. No one eats it their first time over the side. I'm telling you, it's never happened. Not on this crew. Don't ask me why, it just is. 54 yards, Captain! Oh, I'm so into this. I'm so into this. Oh, is he like the sniper? He's like the sniper. Nice. They are coming in hot. Why does this guy look like a young Benjamin Linus from Lost? Is that just me?
What the hell? Your father said you'll take no part in any further... They're my relationships now. We're going to recreate my father's system here. A consortium with all of you sharing in the profit. My men aren't merchants, sailors. They're hunters. Yes, but they're bad at it, Jeffrey. What good is that doing anyone? They're bad at it, Jeffrey. Before I stopped. Are you supporting this? He's like, yes, Jeffrey. I, I, I am Jeffrey. None of this matters unless we can get people to agree to sell through us. You want me to lift the ban on Charles Vane to appease a handful of malcontents on the street? Those malcontents will be a problem to anyone in this room who stands behind you today. Provocation, even sabotage. Your commitment to this place is admirable. But you're young and you're rash. Show everyone your motive here is for the common good. Show them that you can be trusted to keep petty animosity separate from business. Oh, she's gonna have to go talk to Vane now. Damn it. That was a great scene. Something's not right. Captain, the runner's not responding. Someone must have cut the mechanism below decks. <gasps> Call back the vanguard. Perhaps it's time we send them our terms. Mr. Guthrie's orders were explicit. No matter what, I was to make sure that you were on the ship. Wait, 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 this was not the deal. No. You sided with his daughter against him. You forgot your duty. Oh my god. And this one. What's the top? What's the top? No. Marcy Bear. Does Eleanor know that that is currently happening to him? Oh my god. So many things are happening, y'all. Where is he going? Where are you going? Yeah, where are you going? What? Is he following that man that he keeps seeing in his hallucinations or whatever? Unless we can find a way in, there's no way to get the guns off the boat. Only to receive it. But 20 of my men. I can wait. But you cannot. Before departing. I sent a message to the captain of the Scarborough. I told him where I was headed. I told him where he would find you. Oh no! Huh. <gasps> Get the bomb! I gotta start, I think I'm gonna start with talking about just the straight up direction of this episode because the straight up direction this episode was so, so good. I wanted a battle, I wanted shit to go down and shit went down this episode. Um, they left it off with a cliffhanger, so I'm excited to see what goes down in the last three episodes. Shit is gonna need to go down in these last three episodes. Let's just go through, I guess we'll go through every single character and kind of what they're dealing with right now. Eleanor kind of got, um, I don't know what the right word for it, scolded, I guess, by her father. I think it's difficult when he's your father, he's your family member, but you guys just fundamentally disagree on, on what your goal is for the future of, of the island. With Eleanor, I'm kind of glad that she got put in her place a little bit. It kind of shows a little bit of her naivety in terms of everything that's going down in business. Her dad is clearly the older, more wiser person. He has a set plan that he's trying to enact. And basically he knows or thinks that he knows what is best for the island and for the future of the island. Now in terms of Vane, Vane is kind of going through it lately. I don't really know what's going on in his head. He's kind of fucked up. Now him, his whole crew, I guess, are owners of that brothel, the one that Max was at. Speaking of Max, and I got to talk about Anne Bonnie too, because Max has kind of been fading into the background the last couple of episodes, but I do believe I still am remaining hopeful that she is going to have a good character arc, but she is kind of falling like, I mean, I get it, she's, she's captured, she can't really have a story right now until Miss Anne Bonny comes and rescues her, which I think is going to happen. So speaking of Anne Bonny, she's a very interesting character to me as of right now. I kind of like Vane and his whole crew. 
right now. I'm honestly rooting for them. I really like Jack. I think that he's witty. He's smart. He's super smart. People, I think people are gonna underestimate how smart Jack is. And I really am starting to like Anne Bonnie also. I think that she's gonna have a pretty badass character arc. It's just one of these days she's just gonna snap and something is going to happen and she's gonna, just gonna become this badass female character where I thought that Eleanor was gonna be that type of character, but I guess Anne Bonnie is gonna provide that for us. As for Flint and his whole crew, who, who's that guy's name? The guy with the glasses that I said looked like Ben Linus from Lost. I don't know what his name is, but he had a very disturbing, I would say, scene this episode where he literally killed a man by ripping out, ripping off the skin of his neck and he, the guy bled out from his neck. That was savage. Not only did I think that this guy was like super naive and like didn't want to kill anybody or was getting really squeamish with all the blood stuff that was happening, but it went from zero to a hundred in literally three seconds. I mean, he really snapped. He really snapped. I don't know if they're gonna like discuss that in later episodes or if his character is gonna become pertinent. I don't even know his character's name, but that guy needs to be watched because that was disturbing. Predictions for next episode. I really wanna know what's going on with Vane. I hope that there's some payout in regards to that because he's been very mum about his entire thought process. We have no idea what he's thinking or planning. So hopefully that gets explained and delved into a little bit more next episode. I think that with the time that it takes for the other ship to come to Flint, Flint is gonna try to come up with some type of plan but end up failing. I think that maybe he needs to fail. I'm starting to like Flint a little bit more. I know that he hasn't been my absolute favorite character despite being one of the main characters or being the main character. I never really connected with him, but it seems like there's just a deeper part to him that he's not letting out and that makes him really intriguing to me. I think we see little glimpses of his true self. I really just wanna know, I kinda wanna dive into his thought process and what he's thinking. And that's kind of, that's what I love and hate about this show is that I connect with these characters, but only to a certain extent because I feel like they're all just straight up lying. Like I, <laughs> I can't feel sympathetic for people who I do not know their entire story. I don't know if they're lying. I don't know if the story surrounding Flint is even true with Miss Barlow and everything. John Silver freaks me out. Every time he opens his mouth, I want to believe him. He's a very charming dude, but I think that he's lying. Vane is not speaking at this moment. We don't know what's going on in his head. Jack, favorite character, he's still sneaky. He's still really smart and really sneaky, and he has potential to have alternative motives. So it's just like, I don't know who to root for. Like I do, but I don't. Everybody is, it's like every man for themselves kind of thing. So yeah, I guess those are all my thoughts. I'm gonna charge my camera, maybe watch episode six right now. As always, thank you guys for watching. Check out my other reactions if you have not already, and I will see you guys for episode six. All right, bye guys.